PPE detection is a very important problem with applications in numerous industries, be it manufacturing, be it mining, uh, be it uh, healthcare, uh, you name the industry, PPE detection has a role to play. With the computer vision, with the advent of modern AI algorithms, PPE detection has become a lot easier with just vision sensors, no additional sensors required, just cameras and you are able to get a health or get an assessment for how uh, your organization is complying with the requirements with regards to personal protective equipment. Now with all of that in place, detecting and being able to uh, ensure PP compliance becomes very much important. And in this video, we are going to uh, go over how we can use the YOLO V11, which is the latest version of the YOLO models to uh, detect personal protective equipment to ensure PPE compliance. So stay tuned until the end of the video. Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Dhruv. I'm an engineer at Convolve. At Convolve, we assist uh, small, medium, large enterprises with solutions with regards to computer vision, uh, AI, and business automation. If you are a small enterprise, medium or large enterprise you're looking for uh, uh, value added solutions that can help you improve your business efficiency help you automate your business procedures help in better compliance using either uh, ai tools or computer vision based detection systems or with general business automation systems here is our contact information feel free to get in touch with us we would be happy to assist you now YOLO V11 is the latest in line of YOLO models and it is very effective in terms of its reported accuracy, in terms of its reported performance and in terms of its speed. But in this video, we wanted to see how it performs with regards to PPE detection. So we did some experiments and in this video, we are going to go over the entire process, how you can uh, train a YOLO V11 model for PPE detection and how you can analyze the results. Now, the first step for training any machine learning model, any computer vision model is the data set. So guys, for this particular tutorial, for this particular video, the data set that we are using is SH17 data set for PP detection. Here on the screen, you can see the Kaggle page on which this data set can be found. Uh, this is uh, essentially uh, a data set that was introduced or that was created and curated by University of Windsor research group and uh, it is around 14 gigabytes um, of images with labels uh, in total this particular data set covers 17 different classes and all the personal protective equipment related images are uh, present in this data set here is the paper this is the paper uh, for the release of this data set uh, in this paper, they talk about how they got this data set, how they curated it. And on top of that, they also showcase some results. If we move here to the bottom uh, with regards to um, the performance of different kind of YOLO models on this particular data set. So you can see uh, some of the results that they have showcased with different versions of YOLO models. Their experiments go up till YOLO V9. In this particular video, we are going to show how you can use uh, YOLO V11 and train it on this data set. Now, if we talk about the classes that are covered in this data set, this table over here talks about all the classes that are included in this data, data set. In total, there are 17 classes and uh, it covers everything from detecting a person detecting a head face glasses face mask face guard ear earmuffs hands gloves foot shoes safety vest tools helmet medical suit safety suit now guys you would see that not only it is detecting gloves but it's also detecting hands now the the point here is if it's able to detect hands that means gloves are not being worn so hand is basically a no glove category where in certain industry that would be considered as an infraction as a violation of pp requirements if a person is not wearing gloves similarly if it's able to detect the entire face of a person that means the person is not wearing a face mask for industries where it's mandatory this would be again an infraction now guys this data set is here on github as well 
Uh, the easiest way to download it is from Kaggle. You can just download the files from Kaggle and use them. But the data set is also provided on GitHub as you can see over here. Right? Now, uh, next step is after downloading the data set, let me show you what the data set looks like. So here is this data set guys, uh, it contains a labels folder and images folder which contains all the images uh, that form the part of the training set uh, or the test set and it contains labels files it contains which contains all the labels with regards to classes. Um, so let's dive into the training of the model now. Now guys, uh, when working uh, with this data set, as you can see on the screen, um, the data set comes with the images folder, labels folder, metadata folder, VOC labels. Uh, this is not really used in uh, any of the training process for YOLO model. And then it comes with this train file and validation file um, text files. So guys, uh, these train and validation files basically have the names of all these images that fall in the train, uh, train set. For example, the train underscore files dot txt will have all the images that belong to the training set. And similarly, uh, the validation files or txt will have all the files that belong to the validation set, right? So this is essentially the format of the data set. Now, uh, the authors are have given the YAML file for training the YOLO model. Here you can see that on the screen. Um, guys, because if you look at the YOLO format, it is uh, for the train and text file, test uh, train and validation files, um, the the information in the files is such that we need to modify it a little bit to point into the correct folder. So the path needs to be pointing to the correct folder. So there is some pre-processing required, which we would cover in the code. Uh, if you look at the YAML file here for the YOLO uh, model training, this is the configuration file. It lists the path. It lists the train for train file. Um, train file text file and then the validation text file and then it also lists all the classes with respect to um, the the numberings right so 0 belongs to person class similarly 16 belongs to safety vest and so on um, now let's dive into the code so here is the notebook for training a uh, YOLO model um, YOLO v11 for PPE Right. So guys, uh, if we look uh, at the first step, it's just imports. This is nothing unusual. The second is a function to update. Now guys, as I've mentioned before, uh, the train and validation text file that we have has only the name of the images, but we just don't want the names. We also want the absolute path for those images. That is what is lacking. And the reason it's lacking is because depending on where you store your data set, the path to the actual images will vary, right? So here is the function update, which is going to take in the entire uh, text file from the um, train files uh, text file, and it is going to update it to such an output, which will have the modified path of for exactly every image so when we go here here in this function it's going to open the text file and it's going to read the entire text file then in this for loop it's going to go over each of the image in that file and it's going to um, essentially append the root of your data set now the root of the data set here is our images folder where all the images are located. So I have added the path to uh, our images folder where all the images are located. And here this concatenation happens wherein the path to the images folder is concatenated behind the image name. And then this is the new file where um, these, these files are being saved, right? So for this one, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just save them in the same folder as we've done here. You can see the updated train files and updated validation files being saved here. And they will basically be modified and overwritten. So here, as I've shown you before, the updated train file and validation files can be seen that are already saved in the folder. 
Now, the other thing guys you need to make sure is this path to your data set is correct in this YAML config file because if this is not correct, it won't be reading at the right place and your, uh, your model would not be able to train it through an error. Now, um, going back to the code, um, this over here, this command is basically pulling the YAML file, the config file that I just showed you and we have already modified that config file. Then we do the updating, which we've talked about, updating the name uh, or the paths to the train and tech test, uh, train and validation files and creating new updated files. Next is to loading the model. Uh, so we basically import the YOLO model and uh, we um, um, use the YOLO 11 nano model for this particular training. Nano is a smaller version of the YOLO V11 model. It is faster to train, it's faster for inference, it's very good for illustration purposes. And the last thing is essentially calling the train command with the YAML file that we've just created, giving it an appropriate batch size and number of epochs. This batch can be different, could be, you could use a batch of 16, you can use a batch of 32, you can use a batch of 64, depending on the memory that you have. Um, and once all the training is done, it will give you the entire training log here. And on top of that, we can look at the results. Now guys, here are here is the runs file where all the training outputs are saved. When we go in here, we'll see the detect file here and the train2 is the most recent session that we have run for this tutorial. Uh, when we go in here, all the results can be seen. The models are saved and the result files are right here. So these are our training curves. So if we look at the, the loss with more epochs, the model is gonna get better. We only trained it for 20 epochs, provided this data set is a very big data set with a lot of images, hence even training for 20 epochs. Although in, in machine learning terms, it's not very long. For illustration purposes, we kept it at 20 epochs. So we don't spend too much time in training and and, and show you the output at an earlier stage. But of course, there is more room for training as you see the training um, loss curve or validation loss curve still they are going down. So they have not really converged. Um, if uh, they are converged, you would see a curve that would go like this and then kind of flatten down over here. That shows convergence that the loss is not really going down even though you're training for more iterations, more epochs. Then comes uh, some of the training batches here. So these are the batches that are used for training. And then we'll go to the validation sets now. Now guys, here is the validation images. You can see the validation images with the correct labels. And then these are the ones with the predictions. You can see that in most cases, the model is giving a prediction for those respective uh, things. Um, go to a better image here. So let's let's look at this particular image. Uh, there are, these are the ground truth labels and these are then the um, model outputs. So here you can see that it's able to detect the hands, it's able to detect the person. It's doing some false detection of the head over here, but with a low confidence. And then it's detecting some tools over here. Those are extracts. Then um, there is an interesting one here uh, if you look at this image on the bottom left, where my mouse is right now, it's detecting the ground truth says it's a person, a helmet and a face. And let's see what the model predicts. The model says it's a person, a head and a safety vest. So this is very interesting, right? So our uh, ground truth never had a safety vest here. The model is able to detect a safety vest, which is exactly the correct prediction in such a case. Um, this person is wearing a safety vest and the model is able to detect that. Uh, so this is basically a preliminary output of this training run. Um, let's go back to the code here. The code is pretty simple. Once you have your YAML config and data set set up, you can call the model train function, which will basically train the YOLO V11 model and give you all the outputs with all the illustrations right here. So that's it for this video guys. In summary, we've talked about uh, how we can train a YOLO V11 model for PPE detection task 
FPP detection being a very important problem in the field of computer vision, in manufacturing, mining, in all different industries. Uh, we can use the YOLO V11 model, we can train it. We've shown how to train V11 model, we've shown you the code and how to set up the data set to be able to train such a model. The code for this demonstration is available on our GitHub repository. The link is in the description of this video. Hope you found this useful for further demonstrations or more tutorials on how you can use YOLO V11 for se several different tasks. Please leave a comment in this video and let us know what you would like to see next. Until then, thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, guys, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you are notified about any new video that we upload. In case um, you find this uh, information helpful, you think your friends or someone you know may find it helpful, please feel free to share this video with them. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.